I broke out the tool roll here. I'm about to do a compression test and I'm setting myself up to remove my spark plugs. I've got a 5 8 spark plug socket, put a swivel on it, got my super long extension. And I just swapped this out. This was in my tool, my bike toolbox to snap on. I'm going to keep this in my regular truck one and I put the Craftsman in my bike tools. I've been doing a lot of bike work lately. So I'm going to attempt to do all this without removing my tires. I got to get in there with this thing first and remove the skirt. So I'll do that. And hopefully I can reach everything by hand to get the compression tester in there. And if not, I'll have to remove the tires to make it easier, which I don't want to do, but I might have to. Okay, passenger side of the van. I've got the skirts off both sides. This will be easy. Tires still on. Uh, this will be easy. I can reach all these plugs, uh, no problem. Uh, on the driver's side, you guys have seen this if you've been watching my videos recently. I can get to the front plug and the second plug that third plug might be tough. I may jack this side of the vehicle up and remove this tire. Uh, that's just part of the deal with this thing. And I took the engine. I didn't show you me taking the cover off because um, you've seen it already. It's 13 mil socket uh, for the bottom bolts, 15 for the wall bolts, T30 for these things here. Pops off, you've seen it before. Uh, observation real quick I get no more weeping now coming out of these valve cover bolts I think that was that stopped after I put the new PCV in there but also that stop leak stuff I put in seems to have worked that ATP stuff I remember I only put about two ounces in I've got no more weeping at the front of the engine so you got to pull your coil which I will do before I get started on this I'm gonna do one plug at a time I'm gonna start on the passenger side and write all that information down so let's get started on that. Let's open this sucker up on camera. See what it's all about here, huh? See what's in this kit. This is like $31 at Harbor Freight. Um, I bring the garbage can over here. That's how you open that. <laughs> it's not how you open it. What if I want to bring it back? Well, I guess I'm screwed. All right, so. All right. Simple as that. I got to figure out which one of these works. I'll, um, I'll take my plug out and compare it to these, and I'll know which one of these to use. plenty of reach which is good what I'm thinking about doing is running this from inside the cab to from the doghouse and then I can read the gauge as I'm cranking on it uh, instead of uh, have to walk outside of the van uh, to check it and this gives me a little extra reach for that oh, nice all right let's keep working got these pliers here I'm gonna try to use with these plugs you want to be careful here I just put these in the last thing I want to do is pull my plug apart you know, very important. You want to be able to reuse these plugs. You, I've done it before, but usually with uh, wires have been in the van for a lot longer. Uh, so, you know, the road, the, the rubber slightly deteriorates and, you know, whatever, build up, things get stuck and you go to pull the wire and it just rips apart and then you got to get new wires. Let's try to avoid that. It's my number two plug. Looks pretty good to me. I'm going to use this here real quick to uh, compare. To these looks like it's the looks like it's the last one the largest one so go ahead and hook that up try to run this up through the engine compartment and see if we can make that all hook up all right i'm gonna pull this coil wire easier said than done okay that's off now i'm gonna crank this and watch this gauge here Okay, so that gave us about, uh, well, how do you read that, huh? That says 120, between 120 and 150, 
So I guess that's 130-ish. We're gonna call that. You guys see that? That's what we're gonna call that. We'll move on to the next one. Let's write that down. Let's get the cookie crumbs out of the way. I've been eating cookies and cake and getting fat again. Not good. I'm gonna add a little more dielectric grease each time to each of these uh, plug wires when I put them back. If you're a van lifer and you got a bed in the back, you find some nice clean cardboard, pick it up and stick it underneath your mattress because anytime you gotta work underneath the vehicle, it helps. The rubber uh, that reten reten re you know, retains the plug in the spark plug socket got stuck on the spark plug. I flicked it off my finger and it flew down and I can't find it. This is the sort of thing that happens when you're working on your stuff and it adds all this extra time and you, it's unanticipated, but I'm showing you because it happens. Oh man, I got lucky. He was just sitting on top of the lower control arm. Woohoo! A long extension like that really helps in trying to work, you know, inside the wheel well here. You just see that. Spark plug number four. It's so the middle one on the passenger side. Looks good to me. So I'm just trying to get this threaded in here. Try to do this with the camera, left-handed, so yeah, got in there. So the idea is you screw this in until it's real snug. And then you use the quick coupler, which is dangling right here. And you get those two hooked up. And then uh, you can hear the sirens in the background because this is Los Angeles and it's like a war zone here. Every day, all day and night. It's like, I remember New York City back in the day was like that. All right, here we go, number four. Oh, oh, wait a second, forgot to release it. Ooh. Let's do that again. This is the middle plug on the passenger side. It's, uh, it's plug number four. I overdid it on that one. I probably should have done that on the, on the first one too, but they both look pretty close. Yeah, I didn't overdo it on the first one, but that looks to me like it's right about the same spot. We'll call that 230 again. All right. Misspoke. I'm at 130. Boom. Let's write that down. It's the number six plug. This is the back plug on the uh, passenger side. Uh, looks pretty good to me. This is, I don't know why this wants to give me a hard time focusing here. Why does that want to focus? Man, this camera is really something. It'll focus on everything else in the, in the screen. It's going to show you my fingerprints before it shows you this. There we go. I know those little white things are in there, but uh, the uh, thing there doesn't look bad to me. All right, this is spark plug number six, the rear. Okay, that looks pretty good about the same spot I think the others if I'm reading this right yeah it's 125 130 135 oh I'm at 135 on all these I'm sorry I got to correct those numbers that's in the same spot the others were looks like to me right put 135 here I think these two here were really a five as well I'm just as a note to myself uh, I'll go back and review this video uh, but I think that's really what they were. Let's go to the next side. And I'm not going to lie to you. That number six <clears throat> with the wheel straight like that, it was kind of a pain in the butt to get in there. It's, it's, I did it. It, wasn't, it only took me a couple minutes, but obviously it wasn't as easy as the front two. Now on that rear, I added this extra extension with the extra swivel. I said it was redundant when I did the toolkit yesterday, but I'm going to keep it in there because that really does come in handy. Uh, then this stuck on the plug after I pulled this, so I had to use these to grab the back side of this to pull that off. That stuck on the plug, and I was able to use these here to get that off of there. Real easy, I mean seconds. But just letting you know these how these tools all come in handy to do this job. 
I'm having a bitch of a time getting this rear plug wire to seat, but while I was working on that, I noticed this starter connector was weak and it was all bent over and I lifted it up and it snapped right off. So I got to put a new wire connector lead or something on this wire. Of course, why doesn't this ever want to focus on what I want it to focus on? Um, but I got to repair that and that's an issue. And that weakness there, it was bent over and touching the top of the screw here. I don't know if that caused anything, but that might have been part of my problem. Also, this whole thing is kind of loose on there. I do have a new starter I could put in. This is turning into a major project here. It's supposed to be just about testing your compression. But you see what I'm running into. Again, showing you because it can happen to you too. Back to the kit. This is the socket I use for my jack with a three to a half inch. This goes in the drill. That's the drill. Jack's under here. You've seen this before. And I'm just going to jack the vehicle up, put the stands under it. I'm going to take the tires off. Uh, it's just going to make everything easier to do. I really should have just done that from the jump. What I was trying to do is hoping to show you how I could do it without that. But I'm having such a hard time getting that rear plug to seat back on that wire. I don't know what's going on there, and I'm going to pull this starter down, and I guess I'm going to have to replace that starter and uh, that wire connector. So it's turned into a nightmare. All I want to do is check my compression. You should put it in reverse first, Mike. So I mentioned in the uh, tool video about the impact driver. Now typically, you should loosen your nuts while it's on the ground, but with the impact driver, to get them off, you don't really need to do that. As you can see here. Once again, I didn't loosen these yet. So if this doesn't convince you to get an impact driver, nothing else will. That'll make this easier for the compression test. Let's get to work on getting that rear spark plug wire back in and then figure out this starter. I just pulled the new one out and i just noticed these torques these security torques bits on the back that might tighten this front there's nothing wrong with this starter so if i can make it work the connector over here maybe i'll keep it in there but I, i'm gonna have to remove it just wanted uh just wanted to point out that i'm using the tools from the mini tool kit to disconnect the starter bolts all right so i'm rerouting these starter wires over the top of this engine lift bracket I got to replace, I got to pull this apart here and replace all this wire loom. Obviously, I still got to replace this connector somehow. I do have some electrical stuff. Should be able to do that. I pulled all this wire loom off here. I got to pull this bolt to pull this clip. And then I'm going to replace the wire loom itself. I don't like that it goes through this plastic clip down here. And that splits off to the wire that goes to the connector for the crank shaft sensor. Um, yeah, so wire loom replacement and all that is, I'm going to do all that right now. And I think this thing I'm wiggling right now, I might try to rewire that on the other side of these lines because it's right up against the oil pan. And Dave, if you're watching this, this is one of the reasons, one of the things I was thinking about, about drilling the holes through this, because you could run the wires through this if the hole was big enough. But well, I'll work all, it's just a bummer, right? It's just a bummer, just a bummer. Teeth look good on the flywheel though. That's good.
So I'm, I'm gonna put this starter back in because it works. I'm gonna clean it up and see if I can tighten that thing up with those torque screws on the back. So I'll fill you in in a second. Let's pile it on. So I disconnected the battery to work on the starter and I wanna open this back door because as crazy as this sounds, I got a kit which I needed to remove. Oh, I think this is worse. I got some electric stuff. I got stuff in the shop, but I noticed the strap was about to break here. And this is a silly idea anyhow. It was an okay idea, but I need to remove this box anyhow. And because this, I could get some play in this. I want to get this tighter up against the frame. But in order to get to those tools, I got to open this back door. I tried unlocking it and won't unlock because the battery is disconnected. But fortunately, because I think ahead, disregard all this mess here. Remember, I got this here. All right, so this has become, I don't know what this, is this going to be a video that years from now when I'm dead, and I ain't going to live forever, I'll tell you that much. I guess I will on YouTube, but now I can get to the tools to lower this tire and deal with that. Hey, so much for a compression test. It's gonna happen. I gotta get to the other side, but I gotta deal with this first. I don't really remember what I have in here, uh, but there's definitely stuff in here that I'm gonna switch over to the other kit and not use anymore, so that's good. I'll use these right now. I got a solder gun. Solder. Christ. Shrink wrap. Got my stuff wrapped up in this leather here. Oh, that's the tire repair kit. I guess that makes sense. Why is this stuck? Right. That's your tire repair kit. And so not really the electrical stuff. I got a rivet gun in here. All right. So most of my electrical stuff is here in the shop, which is fine. I'm glad I found all this stuff. I wasn't sure where that was, but that's all good stuff to have. Yeah. Guess I gotta put some time into cleaning this mess out today too. Gee whiz. All right, I'm not a wiring guy. I'm working on this wiring harness stuff and the center wire on this crank, or what is it? Yeah, the crank position sensor is pulling at us. I'm going to try to take this apart and get that back in there. And then I'm adding new wire loom all across here. Oh boy. So I wasn't going to film any of this, but I just noticed that. So I figured I'd uh, show you this real quick. I cleaned this up. I'm going to put new wire loom on all of this going right down to there. And I wanted to pull all this out. I had to disconnect this thing. This just wraps over a bolt down there on the engine block. And I'm gonna put wire loom on everything, tuck it all back and do it neater um, than it was. And hopefully that'll help things. But that starter wire and this wire here, this could be part of my issue. All right, check out that yellow wire. Look at the one in the middle. You think that might be giving me an issue? Even the green one is missing insulation. And that was just all hanging down there. So maybe, there was a problem there. Now, I think you can push in on these pins to connect those wires, and there's probably enough slack for me to reuse this connector. I just don't know how to do that. So I'm gonna fiddle around with it right now and see if I can make that work. All right, I couldn't get these pins to release, and what I'm doing is not correct, but what I'm doing is I'm taking, this is too fat, and I'm slicing it down the middle, wrapping it tight, and then shrinking it with a lighter, and then I'm gonna do some more stuff to try to make that better. But it should work. At least it'll stop anything that may have been arcing from arcing. You see the yellow still exposed there. So I'll show it to you again in a second. So I know this is not the right thing to do, but in a pinch, you know, at least that shouldn't arc anymore. And I know nobody likes electrical tape, but I'm gonna wrap some electrical tape and then I'm gonna put some, uh, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and run some, uh, you know, this, this stuff here on everything. Let me get going. I was able to get this locking clip on and I did get it to pinch the shrink wrap. 
so I feel pretty good about that. All right. I forgot to show you this harness I kind of put together here, or, you know, I just put new wire loom on it. I'll use tape, but then I'll put these uh, wire ties wherever I put the tape because I found that the tape starts peeling back. Uh, I didn't put any up here, but cleaned that bracket up there, got that all run down, and uh, I snapped that plastic coupler on there, or whatever, that's like a hanger for this loom. I'm going to see if I can fit that in real quick. But this is all back on, and this plug wire is tight. So I'm going to connect the battery up and just start it really quick. Make sure it starts, turn it off, and then do the compression test on the other cylinders. But this took hours to fix this. So, yeah, fun. I zip-tied the new wire loom, whatever you want to call it, to this fat wire loom loosely. Um, because it wouldn't re reach the other way. I routed the starter wires along the top of the engine mount. I didn't like them underneath here. Uh, this other one I don't like either, but it's kind of stuck there unless I release these lines. So, But I needed this to stay over so it wasn't touching the radiator hose. All right, let me crank this thing over and get on with the uh, what I'm here for. What you're here for. You're not here for all this. You're here for the compression test. I'm sorry. Sorry. It just works out that way sometimes. All right, spark plug number three. This is up front on the uh, driver's side. Looks okay. Not fouled. Okay, spark plug number one looks okay. Uh, that last one, it was at 140. Number five plug, looking good. That gas gauge needle move. I'm just sitting here idling. Look at that. That just that seems that seems a little odd to me. All right, this is the end of the video. Uh, everything's buttoned up. It's very clean down there now with the new wire loom and everything. I just put the doghouse back on. I got to clean up all my tools. Another long video. I'm sorry. It's just supposed to be a compression test, and it just everything went off the rails. I'm trying to let this thing warm up. My temperature gauge has not yet moved, so we'll see how everything goes. But that crank position sensor switch thing that I had to fix up and the, those starter wires and everything, I don't know, man. I won't know how this is running right until I take another drive over a big hill, over a big mountain, like to go see Dave again. But um, I might bring it over to Irvin, over at SMG. I saw him yesterday. And as far as the comp compression test goes, Look at these numbers here real quick. Um, so this is what we're looking at. Boy, I hate when that happens. So yeah, so from 135 to 140 was really where we were at. I was wrong on that. I had to look at the gauge again. I was closer to 135 on those. So I'm within, you know, five of everything. That seems to, even if those were 130, I think I'd be okay. So that's a pretty healthy engine, right? You guys tell me, I don't know my first time doing my own compression test uh, and everything else. The starter stuff I've done before. Fixing that switch, I've never screwed with that before. But we'll drive it, we'll see what happens. Thanks for being here. I, I, don't, I'm, I'm, I shouldn't be apologizing. This is how it goes with an old truck. So if you're watching this video and you, you got to this part, you're all the way at the end now. Thanks for sticking around. It wasn't as entertaining as it usually is uh, because I didn't film all of it. So I just wanted to focus on getting it done, you know. Don't fault me for that. It was all stinking day. Five hours. We started about 11 and it's like 4 o'clock now. So have a great day. Thanks again for being here. Good. Be good to one another. Catch you next time.